So we're at the place where I grew up, uh, basically immediately after I left California, like two years old or something. Um, get out here in a second and show you the building over there which I used to live in. It was a little house I have right beside it which is now a vacation Bible school. So I lived at for many years until I entered into high school. You know. Spent countless hours out here you know riding bikes and playing right in there underneath that awning, that roof. So in the house where I used to live, totally infested with wasps. Now, uh, very near here is this Selena Courthouse where a massacre once took place. Let's go check it out. So here we are at the sailing courthouse. We're gonna walk down there and see the actual courthouse. And then a little uh, death row sanctuary they used to put prisoners in. And prisoners that were being held for trial are gonna be in that little place right here where we're about to investigate the inside. Of course, some that would be on death row would be brought to nearby areas with proper trees and hung. And then they would take them the tree used to be there, it's no longer there, but you could, uh, when I was a kid, you could still see a tree further down that road where uh, a branch would hang over the road, this large branch, and actually still contained the rope marks on the tree where they used to hang people on that tree over the road. And this right here is the cemetery. We'll see this first. that were not named white crosses here and they don't step on them before the trail of tears the Cherokees already had like schools and uh, libraries and stuff like that set up over near Alabama and Georgia until the trail of tears which forced them to move to Indian Territory in Oklahoma there are several counties, you know, that were established as a Cherokee nation, you know, in Oklahoma. Actually, the Navajo nation has now uh, been studied to have even more people than the Cherokee nation in America today. But they experienced, after the Trail of Tears, some, some kind of golden age, you know, and they established multiple seminaries, and then uh, had constructed nine official courthouses for each of the nine individual counties of the Cherokee Nation. Only one of those still remains today, and that's where we're going to go explore. Interesting cemetery here. Uh, list of the people. Let's go over here and see this. Come on. that I want to show you. Now this one says murdered five years approximately before the saline massacre occurred this guy aj Calvert, was a store owner and he was murdered the guy who killed him you know died in the process of running from the law uh 1858 uh died can't really see that now 
but there was actually someone uh, murdered. It wasn't this guy specifically, but the area is known for what is known as the Saline Massacre, and uh, trials were held at this very courthouse. here shows each of the nine counties of the Cherokee Nation where they built nine individual courthouses. A total of four murder trials have taken place at this courthouse. The story goes that about five years later after the murder of Adia Colvin, the store owner, another store owner uh, is murdered. So Thomas Bag at closing time uh, is at a store closing it down and then he opens the window to talk to David Ridge who is the sheriff at that time who wants to talk to him. Now when he opens the window he gets shot by a guy off in the distance. David Ridge goes to chase after the man and dies. And so that brings us to three trials, murder trials that have been tried at this courthouse and the fourth one is uh, the sheriff and his deputy go down to the courthouse after those two murders that occurred there. They go down to the courthouse to investigate what's going on. Two people are actually on the porch. Uh, one of them have uh, a shotgun in their hands, which the sheriff takes away, goes in to search the building, and then is murdered at that location. And so there's some kind of scramble that happens and he ends up dying. Uh, the guy, one of the guys that didn't have the shotgun that was there on the porch, uh, was tried for the murder of that sheriff, which his last name was Sunday. And what's really interesting is the same person who murdered the original store owner five years before the sailing massacre has the same last name, Roe, as the person who shot the sheriff. The murderer of the sheriff who went in to investigate uh, escaped, uh, pre uh, he was being held somewhere, possibly even this location, and he ended up escaping. And so he could be connected to the murder of Baggett and uh, that sheriff who went after him. So it could have been him who shot Baggett, who shot that sheriff, and who shot the sheriff who went in to investigate. And it so happens that he was actually living there at the courthouse. Four people dead, two actually in the courthouse. This place could be haunted. beautiful place. It's take forever to mow. So here's what's crazy. The guy who had the shotgun taken away from him on the porch, you know, when that sheriff showed up to investigate, you know, he took the shotgun from this guy who was uh, Rose's best friend and his best friend has the same 
last name as the original store owner that was died five that died five years before the massacre. So he has the same last name, and he was the one holding a shotgun. But the guy who actually went in and killed the sheriff when he went in to research the courthouse uh, to search for stuff, you know, that guy's last name was Roe, and Roe is the same last name as the guy who killed, you know, the original store owner with the last name Halvan. Now, we know that that Roe actually died in an escape attempt from when he was running away from the wall. He died, but, you know, another guy with the same last name is sitting on a porch with another guy with the same last name as the original store owner. So you have, again, this, you know, these two people, Roe and Halvan, and then Roe, you know, is convicted of the murder of that sheriff, uh, Sheriff Sunday, and then he ends up escaping. So my theory is that this row guy is connected to the previous row. He probably is like a, a family member, you know, some robbers who are after the store owner's money. And one of the relatives of the store owner, Colvin, is probably that guy, his best friend. And so uh, they kill another store owner in order to get that money, uh, probably got away with it. Because picture this, you know, the store owner gets killed by, you know, a store owner with the last name Colvin gets killed by a guy with the last name Roe. And then a few years later, another murder happens. And, you know, the two people that are on the porch, one of them has a shotgun. You know, they're going to get investigated for another murder that's occurring in that area. And both of those people have the last name Colvin and Roe. Is this a coincidence? Because somebody actually ended up dead. The sheriff ended up dead as a result of going in there. And so I think for Colvin, you know, he's probably related to, you know, the guy who has the headstone out in the cemetery. He's probably his relative and he's uh, best friends with Roe, which is probably a relative of the guy who killed that original stone owner. So it's like my daddy killed your daddy. You know, why don't we be best friends and maybe try to actually accomplish that again and actually succeed, and they probably did. They probably conspired together as best friends that were connected to the original murder to repeat the scenario and get away with tons of cash.